everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Chippen. I am playing the role of Michael, so I'm a little trippy, but we got it. Uh, yeah, I'm Cade Spector. I'm a senior undergraduate student here. Uh, I'm pretty excited. I'm playing Danny. What's up, everyone? My name is Neam. I will be playing Jordan. Uh, I'm Michael, it's my first semester here at Duke. I'm playing Ben. <laughs> so I'm, I'm Andrew Ball, I'm at me. Um, and yeah, I wrote this film. Who's Shot Bubble is very heavily influenced by the big short in both plot and style. It talks about the current onset of the recession. It comes from the perspective of a CS student, Michael, who explains his story and reasoning for why he's dropping his offer to Microsoft. The film itself will talk about a very negative thing, uh, the recession obviously, but I think it has a very positive you know, outlook. Okay, we'll start the table read. The film is called Bootstrap Bubble. We hear the music of cello suite number one in G major. We see a calm blue sky. A few moments pass and we slowly pound that pan down to reveal the Duke Chapel and a rush of students walking below. Our protagonist, Michael, walked past the chapel in a swift and self-assured manner. We cut and see the front of his body as he continues to walk, walk forward. His face looks slightly anxious, like he is waiting for something important to happen. However, in his gait, he contains a confidence that knows it will be good. We hear Michael's voice. He is thought through his words, justifying every last letter without impulse. My dad has always pushed for the best in me. What he's inspired has changed my outlook in life, but more importantly, what I can do for others. We see a close-up of different technologies. My drive in life my, is in computer science and technology. We see news footage of Nokia advertisements and early 2000s tech company IPOs and announcements. When I was born, this was a completely different space with flip phones and walkmans. And companies like Napster, MySpace, Pets.com were around. In fact, in 1999 alone, 457 technology companies IPO'd. We see footage of the NASDAQ and the stock market in 2002. Remember it or not, things in the tech world were crazy back then too. The NASDAQ rose to a, a then all-time high of $5,040.68. I mean, companies blew up faster than ever before. The music stops. We see an image of a screen with a red downwards arrow above a stock trading floor. But the world came back to equilibrium. It cuts to black briefly. Then, we see the news media covering the 2002-2008 recessions. By 2002, the dot-com bubble burst, losing $5 trillion. And six years later, the world would again rise and fall with the 2008 housing crisis. Both of these events caused recessions in the US. People saw opportunities to make easy money, and they took it. You cut to black. Now, I, I want to say the culture of opportunity grabbing has changed for the better. People would have learned their lessons. Right. We see the title, Bootstrap Bubble. We see it put together Michael walk towards a closed classroom. Through a window, we see a man that looks older than Michael. Michael opens the door and walks towards the man. Hey, Danny, it's nice to meet you. Michael, my man, how are you? You doing all right? I'm good, I'm good. It's nice to finally meet in person. Hey, did, did you get a chance to look at my resume? I did. And uh, what was it you want me to look for again? suggestions for improvements. I just want to make sure it's good for this application season. I mean, it depends. First, you got to tell me where you're at. How far along are you? What's your plan? Well, to be honest, I'm not really sure how to start. I've looked at a few companies in depth. That... Stop right there. The company doesn't matter. Really? Uh, shouldn't you know where you're applying to? No, not today. Today, you send it everywhere. When it comes to the things that you care about, they're really all the same. Got it. Well, what was interning like? I mean, you were at Amazon, right? <laughs> I was at Amazon, all right. Most like Amazon. Best time of my entire life. $50 an hour, incredible stipend, free food, and most importantly, no work. Shit was easy. It was like stealing uh, candy from a baby, you know? Like, like stealing money from a baby. Um, how did you prepare for interviews and stuff? Okay, here's what you gotta do. You gotta grind your ass off on lead code, watch some YouTube videos, do a coding problem, right? Repeat this. And uh, you do this until lead code is seared into your brain. 
And if you're smart, right there, you'll be fine with all your interviews. And uh, if you're socially competent, then you'll do way better. Look, getting into the software industry isn't as, isn't as complicated as you might think. I'll tell you a little secret here, all right? It's a pipeline. We see Michael's face, astonished and dumbfounded. This is what I learned. I didn't believe it at first, but as I met more people who succeeded, I realized this is the culture. But today, today I think the future might look a little different. Uh, we see a graphic that says 2022. And on the central board that's, that's all sees face, we see in big underlined chalk letters, CS250 exam review, written above scribbles with diagrams and code. Jordan is standing in, uh, in front of the board, sporting white sneakers, jeans, and a basic shirt. Ben is sitting in the first row of lecture seats. On his computer, Jordan is writing on the board. Ben, read me Moore's Law. As he walks towards the board, he scrolls through the computer. Okay, Jordan, Moore's Law is the observation that the number of transistors on a circuit doubles every two years. Jordan writes on the board. Ben sets the computer down on the table behind Jordan. Ben, leaning on the table, looks up at Jordan. Some people think it's stopping. Jordan stops writing. He turns around and looks at Ben. Look, Moore's Law fundamentally represents tech's exponential growth. It's not going to stop. Look, it might for CPU since transistors may reach their physical limits, but through other things, it's going to keep going. I don't know, Jordan. My job search says otherwise. Everything is just slowing. You're being an idiot not accepting the job right in front of you. You know that, right? Fuck My you. company. Fuck you. Convince, convince Michael. We'll see him soon anyways. But you're not gonna change his mind. His dad's friend helped him secure something already. Ben looks down at his computer and starts clicking. Look, if you both just listen to me for a moment, maybe you would understand. Ben, this is an opportunity. I just got a rejection email. Fuck! I'm getting fucked. Jordan, Big Brother Tech is fucking me. Jordan wonders to himself as he turns to face forward. <sighs> Let's go. I set up this damn meeting with Michael, we're fucking going. You see a close-up of Ben's rejection email. Jordan and Ben are packing up in the background. We hear Michael talking. Ben told me a lot about you, Jordan. I gotta say, I'm curious. What exactly do you do? We see Jordan sitting in front of Ben and Michael. Jordan looks left and right at Ben and Michael. Good question. I wake up, read the news, bang out two bangs, and I fucking crush. <laughs> I mean, okay. What's your company? Beam LLC. See, I want to break into the entertainment tech industry. Make something new. Change things, Michael. Join me. And you too, Ben. Jordan, you have a Microsoft to offer. I mean, you understand that, right? Okay, Michael. I have something for you. Jordan grabs his computer and starts reading off the screen. Recession-proof Microsoft lays off nearly a thousand employees. Jordan stares at Michael, waiting for an answer. Okay. This doesn't change anything. How does it not? You think you're going into something stable. You're not. You think you're going into something easy. You're not. Come on, Jordan. These are billion, no, no, trillion dollar monsters. They'll win. They always have. That's where you're wrong. The market is going to shit, specifically in tech, everywhere. We see footage of different podcasts and videos announcing negative things within 2022 tech. We see news about COVID, job layoffs, and insane stock movement. We know what's coming. Right now, the NASDAQ is two times higher than it was in 2002. Things have been crazy these past two years. Things fell hard in 2002 and 2008, and things will fall even harder in the future. Yeah, but, I mean, that sounds terrible, but wh why would you even want to start anything new? Your company... Michael, here's the kicker. When giants fall, David's rise. You... You mean Goliaths, right? Because that's, that's, that's what the saying is, David and Goliath. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Anyways, little Davids, like you and me, we have the chance to make big out of this, to be winners, to finally take talent from the job market these Goliaths suck dry. But how do you know? I don't. I don't. But this is what happened in 02 and 08. These were the formative times of Amazon, Netflix, and Apple, and Michael, formative times are upon us now. What? So... So you're telling me that this is an opportunity, <laughs> even with all of this, this, this terrible shit that, that you say is going to happen, you're the, you're the fucking prophet. 
Prophet fucking Jordan? There's no way you're the Prophet Jordan. You're crazy. You're crazy. But this is past that. Ben's voice fades out. Something about him is convincing. I mean, even as unhinged as Jordan is, he makes fucking sense. Things might change. Maybe for the better. We see clips of early presentations and ads of the technology companies we're familiar with today. Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Facebook. Computer technology is the most important and rapidly changing market to date in human history. It's, it's something that nothing else can represent. It's, it's insane. We hear typing. We see Michael typing an email on his computer. Looks tired. He's been thinking for a while. I wish I could join you. Something tells me this is the time to take risks. Look, you're the person who got me to where I am today. Hopefully, I explained myself. Hopefully, once again, we'll be able to work together. We see the email close up, revealing that Michael is sending it to a Microsoft employee. I appreciate everything you've done for me. And if you were still here, my dad would too. Thank you, Michael. Michael presses send and closes the laptop. Peter puts this. We see Michael approaching Ben, who is waiting just outside of West Union on the bridge. The light from the gl glass building shines on their faces. So, you actually listened to him? <laughs> yeah. I'm excited, and I got some ideas. Fuck. Man, if he's right, things will be crazy. <laughs> We see Michael and Ben walk into Wu. We hear the music of Salute D'Amour, Op 12, or hopeful classical music. We cut to black, and over the black, the title, Bootstrap Bubble. And then just two long quotes. Um, and that's it, okay.